And Beckham saw Sullivan off his line. Oh! This is a private member's bar. That is absolutely phenomenal. Exclusively for the supporters of the greatest football team in the world. Cleared. Geeks with a shot. Jerry Manchester United. Beckham. Into Sheringham. And so sorry. Manchester is orange, talking really orange. The charity field felt like a glorified preseason match. And I wonder if Bernardo Silva understood he was playing football and not the UFC. Plus we have some new signings like DeLitt and Mazurai. I don't know, probably butcher that name, but who the hell cares. And they claim that Eric Ten Hag has some kind of wizardly. Let's hope the good kind, D. D, how you doing, my man? Too bad, Keith, about yourself? Not bad at all. It's always uh, my favorite time of the year. You know, obviously we are in the U.S., so, uh, you know, we got the start of the Premiership, uh, preseason NFL, uh, baseball season's getting close to playoff time, so life is good, my man. Yeah, all those sports are all just sort of yeah. accumulating to one another all at the same time, which is great. We're, what, three days away from United kicking off the Premiership season, so again, yep. against yeah. against Fulham on Friday. Yep. But, yeah, it's been an interesting summer. Uh, definitely yeah. not one without uh, between the Euros, the Olympics, the transfer window, you know, preseason friendlies, you, you name it. It's just been a, a packed full yeah. summer of, of sports. Absolutely. It's been, yeah, you do the Euros, Copa America. And yeah, even, you know, there's, uh, you know, I feel like the Olympics had lost some of their, at least for me, like I remember as a child, I was always you know love the olympics especially you know growing up here i mean the dream team was you know huge you know that team was incredible but i don't know as i guess i got older not that i stopped caring about it i just i guess i didn't follow it as much i, I watched a little bit more th- of it than i did this year um you know all both the basketball finals were very good even the um the uh the gold medal game in the in the men's soccer game i didn't watch all of it but it, the the first half I watched, it was entertaining. I don't know if you saw any of that. I actually didn't get to watch like any, any of the Olympics. I the, I try to prioritize my time watching, like honestly, the United preseason. I watched every single United preseason match, mm-hmm. and then some of the other other like no the other matches like the like the uh, didn't get to watch the classical because it was on the same time United Liverpool. But I watched yeah like, no like some of the Chelsea matches and some of the Arsenal mm-hmm. matches and stuff like that. Just the usual the usual kind of stuff, but. Uh, but I didn't get to watch any of the Olympics, believe it or not. I'm, I'm the same as you. I used to, I loved watching it growing up. I was the swimming and then, you know, even some of the football matches and then boxing. And so it's just, it's lost. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just luster. It's lost. Yeah, I feel, like, yeah, I don't know what, you know, what it is. I mean, I, you know, we won't really get into any of the politics here. But, um, but you know, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's, um, you know, lost, like you said, some of its luster or whatever. But, um, all right, so let's get into it right away. Charity Shield, uh, we lost to City in penalties. Um, I thought overall we had a pre- played a pretty decent match, you know, started off slow um, and then, you know, kind of came into a rhythm, especially with, uh, you know, Garnacho coming on the pitch. I thought he made a big difference. Um, you know, Bruno continues to prove just how important he is to that team. Just an energizer bunny, the passing and all that. Um, you know, we'll get into this later. It seems like they're ready to lock him up long term or whatever. But yeah, I mean, those were just kind of some of my quick thoughts uh, real quick from the match. I know you have a lot of thoughts, too. What were some of the things you noticed? Well, I, I think first off was both teams didn't start off with like they're starting eleven. Um, oh yeah. You know, United, United didn't have a recognized forward. No, there was no striker with Hoyland being out injured. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think Ten Hag wanted to risk Zerksi Zerksi because he said he wasn't match fit yet. Um, and then there was no recognized left back as we know. No, Luke Shaw's missing what the first three weeks of the season already. So yep. Uh, and then on City side, they didn't have. There was no Kevin De Bruyne, no Rodri, no Foden. Um, mm-hmm. It was. It definitely wasn't their. Uh, no, wasn't no their starting eleven? 11. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely so, not. Neither neither team was at a, a, a speak, but like you said, it was. It felt like it felt like a preseason friendly. It took United about good fifteen twenty minutes to get into you know, the swing of things and to get up to the tempo of the match. But once they did, that was definitely it. Was one of the better matches I've seen them play this entire summer in terms of like I watched every single preseason match. They were awful against Rosenberg. Mm-hmm. They were okay against Rangers, but it was like a no, it's a youth team almost that was put out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't do too well against Arsenal as we knew the, they lost two one. Yeah. Uh, but Real Betis three two and the 
the uh, was it the Snapdragon Cup? Um, <laughs> then obviously that, that that the match against Liverpool, they created chances, but they lost you no know, three nil. Um, yeah, which the Liverpool preseason match and this match, the charity the charity sheet was sort of very very similar. United created a lot of chances, um, mm-hmm. just never just didn't take them. Uh, I think if United yeah. would have took them, we wouldn't have went to penalties. Um, but it definitely uh, it felt like a preseason friendly, despite Bernardo Silva's. Uh, mentality going on going into the match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean I let's just get into that right away. Uh um, you know, about the eightieth something minute. Um you know, I read I read Bernardo Silver's uh post game comments too. Looks like he took offense to what he says some match stalling tactics on Ganarcho on Ganarcho and when the ball went out of play, he thought he, you know, shouldn't have touched the ball or basically or whatever. All right, Bernardo, you know, pound sand, man. Like, it, you know, it, it's a, you know, it, it's essentially a glorified preseason match. Like, you know, you know let's not get any uh, injuries in this here, you know? Ah, well, coming from a man that can turn around and say that there were like, nope, stalling tactics, stuff like that. They, 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 yeah. they, got, they have 115 things they need to be worrying about. And their uh, city seem to be a team of, they're uh, offended by everything, but ashamed of nothing mindset. Because if, I don't know if you remember this as well, in the FA Cup final, uh, Bernardo Silva did something very similar to Johnny Evans. Oh, the yeah, yeah. As well. yeah. The ball went out and Johnny Evans was warming up with along with a couple of other Man United subs. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bernardo Silva did a little kick out at him and, that Johnny yeah. Evans, of course, embellished it, and he ended up in the, he ended up in the floor. But still, like it's a preseason <laughs> friendly. It was like not the kind of tackle you expect to see, especially on a young player from behind. Like, you could clearly see he wasn't even playing the ball. So it's a little yeah. bit of a. I, I know it's. I know as United fans, we're probably going to get like no ridicule for saying, "Oh, just you no know, take the loss." But it's it was a little bit of a salt in the wound when the same man that I thought technically should, probably should have been sent off for the tackle against Garnacho. Well, yeah, ends, I mean, to be honest, it probably should have been a red card, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, I mean, it was a reckless challenge. Yeah, it wasn't even, there was zero attempt on the ball whatsoever. I mean, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I guess, I mean, not, I don't believe in, like, minor victories or whatever because we ended up losing the match. But, I mean, he did miss his PK, so I guess yeah. we got that, right, D? <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. So, yeah, with, uh, with, that, with all that, like, just, that annoyed me. Just overall that that tackle, but I thought United you know, played well. Um, they looked decent, like you know, like you and I talked about it. They definitely looked a lot better than what we expected, especially with the the start in eleven that Ten Hag sent out there. I didn't, mm-hmm. I, I the, the four two four formation that he had set up with, uh, you know, he had Mount and Bruno giving that freedom yeah. to go forward, and then he had Manu and Casemiro sort of holding down the midfield, um, and then obviously the the the, the flat back four with Martinez playing left back, nice. and then. Evans and Maguire Meyer. and Dallow. Um but I just uh, the one thing and I, I don't know why it's just it's irking the bejesus out of me is United got rid of De Gea um and didn't renew his contract because they wanted a goalkeeper to play the ball from his feet but the one thing I've noticed out of Anana over the last few like all throughout preseason and you no know, near the tail end of the uh of the season last year they're not keeping the ball. Like he's he's he, he's. I've, I mentioned it in our, our group chat during the match that uh, there's a big difference between Ederson and Onana during the match. Ederson will ping a ball and find a player, mm-hmm. where Onana just kicks it in a general direction of a United player. Yeah. And like, there's been too many times where I've seen it. Now I would love to. I don't definitely don't have the time to do it, but I would love for somebody to go to break down the the stats of how many times Onana goes goes long and how six and how many his yeah success the rate. success rate of it yeah it, that would be it, interesting to see yeah because that was the one thing that everyone said was United's Achilles here with the hair was that as soon as the ball went back to the hair teams would press him to make him kick it long because he didn't have the he was not great with the ball at his feet he, yeah. Onana now teams to sit back. And they keep their shape because Anana sits on the ball, he stays, you know, stands with the, the bottom of his foot on top of it and slows down the mm-hmm. play and stuff. Mm-hmm. And instead of just playing out from the back the way that you no know, Ten Hag wants to do it or like, yeah. claims to do, Onana's constantly just kicking it long to absolutely nobody. And it, a lot of yeah. times he's kicking into 50 50. Like, right, no one, United don't have a big you no know, target yeah. man that they can bring the ball down. That can, like, yeah. They can win the ball in the air. Like no, they don't have a Weghurst or a Zlatan Ibrahimovic anymore. Um, and so, like Rashford's not going to win the ball against Ruben Diaz. Uh, Mount's definitely not going to. Bruno Fernandez no. definitely isn't going to. Uh, no. Ahmad and Fernando Garnacho. So I don't understand this whole infatuation with Onana. Uh, where I personally 
I think the jury's still out in him. Um, I read a, a, an article about Paul Scholes, and Scholes said the same thing that there's uh, there's question marks over Anana. Like he single handedly dumped United out of the Champions League last year with some of the clangers that he let on, and then this season. He's not really, uh, he came out and did, I don't know if you've seen the article or his interview where he came out and said that he's going to take risks and United fans better get ready for oh, some entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did see that. I didn't read the whole thing, but I saw the headline, yes. Yeah, so I read it. It was just stupid. It just looked, it sounded like somebody that was just trying to, that just, I, I, he just, he was trying to almost come up with, like, come up with excuses for him maybe trying to do a Cruyff in the middle of a match or something, but all I'm <laughs> yeah. Saying, yeah. All I'm saying is that, like, it, that United got rid of a, a very good goalkeeper who gave a big chunk of his career to them. Uh, they got rid of him because of the fact he couldn't play the ball with his feet. Now, brought a goalkeeper in. Now, can Onana strike a ball with both feet? Yes. But I just I hate the fact that they're, they're, this long ball mentality. Yeah. That they're, they're going, it's, it's well, going, like you it's said, it's just pack. going nowhere. And it's, you know, most of them are 50 50 balls, is what it what it appears like. So it's, you know, it just kind of kills kills the build up or whatever. And if you look well, at even at the charity shield, um, you know, you look at the um, the Garnacho goal, that was a build up from the back. Um, you yeah. know, Bruno, and then, uh, yeah, it was definitely so it was the total opposite of, of just him just pinging or you know just kicking the ball to wherever the hell he think is it, it's going you know yeah exactly and like it, teams are going to eventually figure out united like they're going to say okay united likes the ball from the back so okay what they there's two ways teams are going to set up against them they're going to high press like the, mm -hmm. you know like the way the way city arsenal and mm -hmm. uh no those kids liverpool well, for you, example you, do. and united did that a lot in the charity shield at least yeah. i noticed that especially in the second half Exactly, and they you know it forced Ederson into a couple of passes mm -hmm. that he ended up over hitting out, out and they give the ball away. But mm -hmm. with United, there's two ways now teams are going to set up: either they're going to high press, or what they're going to do, they're going to as soon as the ball goes back down, Anna, they're not going to press him, and they're just going to go ahead and like say, okay, let's let's just let him kick it long because if yeah, there's no because options, we know, yeah, yeah, you know, like you got most of your players up here, probably yeah. not going to win it, so we'll take our chances on fifty fifty on winning it back. Exactly, and I think what they'll do is they'll the like, teams will start setting themselves up defensively to take away the options, the short options. They'll not pressure mm -hmm. Onana. What they'll do is they'll cut off like so. Say, 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 for example, like Martinez shows out, le out, out wide left and goes into left back mm -hmm. position to show for the ball. Instead of pressing Onana, you'll notice forwards will start going towards Martinez to cut that to cut mm -hmm. that option off, to cut yeah. the angle off. To the yep. point where, like, they'll give them, they'll leave them with no other options but to go to, long. To, yeah, exactly. Basically, and, then, and it plays right in. And what happens then is you end up having two center backs that are spread apart, and there's a huge yeah. hole in the midfield. Yeah, there's a gigantic hole in the middle, and it leaves yeah. you completely wide open. Yeah. So we'll say, like, uh, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised how well they played um, on Saturday, considering what I watched, what I witnessed in the in the in the preseason. So it be, I want to. I want to see the same mentality, the same energy. That, like you rightly said, they high pressed. They they did well. They it seemed like the players actually were, were doing exactly what they were supposed to be. They were told to do by Ten Hag. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to see it now transition into the Premier League against Fulham now on Friday. Yeah, I do too. I mean, obviously, you know, um, you know, I'm kind of the mindset. Um, you know, yeah, the preseason is important. You know, to build up, you know, fitness and. Uh, you know, trainer, whatever, but I am trying not to read into it too much. I know it wasn't exactly a great preseason. I'm hoping what we saw in this charity shield was a little bit more indicative of what we can expect from this squad. Um, but you know, plus obviously, you know, we don't have all, you know, we don't have everyone, you know, obviously at some point, you know, we should get Euro back. Um, you know, at some point, you know, we obviously will get into this at, in the, in a little bit too. You know, we have two brand new signings who should help out in theory in, uh, in defense and delete. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of curious, man. I mean, I, you know, I'm not expecting us to win the league this year, but I, you know, I'm very optimistic. No, no, and so am I, um, my, my, well, you and I talked offline too. One of the players that I'm really looking forward to looking at and seeing how much he progressed over the last, you know, year and a half, two years is uh, good old little Garnacho. 
Oh yeah, I, yeah. We were talking before we signed on. I mean, I, I think this guy he he needs to be in the starting eleven almost every day. I mean, it was night and day when he got when he came on in that second half. I mean, he's just oh my, he's, he's just so fun to watch, so talented. That the goal he had was absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I mean, we're just a better team when he is starting. No, no, I, I agree. I, I, and I, I and I don't usually drop stats, but I just I thought this was pretty fascinating. I mean, and it's a good name to be, uh, you know, associated with. Uh, Garnacho scored uh, sixteen, scored or assisted sixteen Premier League goals as a teenager for Man United. Ronaldo's the only non-British player with a more goal involvement as a teenager at 17. So, I don't know. That's pretty good company to be in, I feel like. Right, D? Wow, well, definitely. And he, he does have, like, obviously he's nowhere near, like, can he get to Ronaldo's no, Yeah, success? I'm not saying he, he is, level? but, I mean, he he's trending in that direction, I feel like. No, yeah, definitely. Like, you no, know, we watched, we got to watch Ronaldo when he came over from Sport in Lisbon when he was 19, and um, it took him a couple of seasons to get to get oh, really yeah. used to the, the you know, the way the way he was supposed to play. Well, the way it's a the different, was. it's a whole different uh, animal, you know. Yeah, exactly. So that's the one thing that I want. I want. I'm really interested in seeing is how well Garnacho is going to. You know, get implemented into the team. Uh, obviously, ten I trust him. Um, I think he's earmarked. Garnacho, Ahmad, obviously Hoyland, Xerxes yep. is going to be options going forward. Yep. Um, obviously, Mano. But, I mean, he started him oh, in yeah, the Charity yeah. Shield. I, I'm anticipating he's going to be a regular every, in every single match. Ah, uh, definitely. I think there's definitely there's going to be a like every good team has a spine and what I mean by that there's mm-hmm. like always a, a good core group of players that can come through yeah. and play week in week out yeah yeah you're 100% spot on I mean and um, you know speaking of that spine as someone who actually um, you know y- you noticed it in one of our uh, or in our group chat is uh, Casemiro looked pretty impressive in that center defensive midfielder role um, you know yeah, you, yeah. You, you you even said that he reminded you of the player that joined two years ago. Now, hope you know. I I hope that is you know carries on you know through the rest of the year. And he just had an off year last year. I think I think there was a lot of reliance on Casemiro that I don't think I don't think he was used to playing as many matches. Like, and that's why I hope United can go get. You got yeah. Day or another player to play, mm-hmm. that can play that hold midfield role because mm-hmm. not only did he play hold midfield, but he also played center back as well. Center back, and yeah, he played out of position, you know, uh, quite a bit. So, you know, maybe, yeah. uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, I'm kind of maybe leaning towards that just being out of, out of position and playing so much that it was just too much. And, you know, I'll be honest, you, you know, you know, I'm not a professional footballer, but you know, when you're at a your, I guess your norm or your comfort zone, and something that you're not used to doing all the time, I could see how it definitely would throw your routine and your rhythm off. No, oh, definitely. I think I think a lot of people underestimate they you no know, when you're when you're constantly having like a new eleven plan at weekend mm-hmm. every week. Like the, the the all the best teams always have you no know, eight to nine players that are playing. On every, mm-hmm. every almost every match, they might they might switch out a couple of players here and there, but it doesn't affect the rhythm of the team. And I think when the there were so many injuries United had last year, there were so many different combinations across the you no know, the back line, the yeah. field, even up front, that it it definitely didn't allow the players to find the rhythm, to find that connection that they have with you no know, with one another. And I think nah, Casemiro, I... he looked a little leggy at the end of last season. Um, after halfway through the season, looked a little leggy. Um, and I'm hoping this year that they can try to lo- do a little bit of load management with them because the player I seen on Saturday was the player I hope to see the rest of the season. No, I, I agree with you, man. And like you said, it, I think a key part of that is load management, which, yep. um, you know, I... I, you know, I w- would want to say that it gets done. I, j- I just would be totally surprised if Ugarte, you know, does yeah. come here before the club. I'd be, I, I, I'd be stunned if it did. But I mean, it, it would be, it would be a fan. It would make an incredible transfer window 
even better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And but I do like the fact that this is the first time that United have went in for a player and a team's went in and said, We want this amount and instead of United saying, Okay, we'll just go ahead and pay it because that's no we can. They've decided to up no, we're not we're we don't we don't think he's worth the fifty one million that PSG's. Oh yeah. So and I think they've walked away to the point where obviously the player is eager to come to United. They've already agreed personal terms with them. Um so it's almost to the point where United are when we talked about this in a previous podcast that I love the new mentality of United going into the transfer window. They agree personal terms first, which almost puts that little bit of pressure on the team to either you know, agree to terms because you already know the player is not really 100% committed to you. So we might as well let them leave and get you know, make yeah. some money on And mm-hmm. uh, I'm thinking that's the way United is going to do it right now with you know, regard to is that he's ready to agree personal terms. PSG is yeah. the one digging their heels in. Um, will they come to United? Uh, I'm agree. I'm in agreement with you. Like, if if he does, if he doesn't end up coming to United, um, it, it is what it is. It may, no, it's something. That it's not supposed to happen. It's yeah. not written in the stars, if you will. But if he does come, it'd be a great, you know, another transfer window to uh, another great transfer to add to the the really successful. My personal opinion, the successful transfer window. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, you know, and that's a good transition into. Um, you know, getting into, you know, basically delete and not, you know, all the uh, different signings and what's going on with it. So quickly, how would you rate this transfer window on a scale of one to 10? What, what number would you get it? I would give it, I, I would, the only reason I would say is I would give it a seven out of 10. The main okay. reason why is the fact that United, like, you know, and I, I, the the way he pronounced his name, I, I looked it up and did I, I even did a little bit of research. It's Ma- so it's Mazaru. No, Mazrui. It's so Mazrui. Mazrui. Yeah, yeah Mazrui. There we go. So, uh, so he can play both sides. Uh, no, like we've seen uh, Ashworth come out and said, you know, we talked about him saying mm-hmm. he's a very dynamic, no defender. He can play left back, right back. That's great and everything. Um, I love the fact that he can play left back. But one of the things that the reason I would give it a seven out of ten is the fact that United have two left backs at the club already that are both injured. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like Malasia, we have, we didn't see him at all last season. Luke yeah. Shaw went off to the Euros, played for England, and then all of a sudden can't even play, can't play for United now for the first you no know, three matches I've seen for reports. Yep, is that, I think United should have that should have been a, uh, the two positions that we talked about it before that I would have loved for United to really prioritize after getting in. They like obviously got center backs in, which is great. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. In a couple of, you know, a couple of other players in there, uh, like Xerxes and so forth. Uh, mm-hmm. It's great. But I really wanted to see another center defensive midfielder to try to like you know, lessen the load onto Casemiro's shoulders. And also mm-hmm. another le- another left back that, that, that can come in there and really... I don't expect the left back to come on. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm overlooking little little Hamas for United. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe Ten Hag has a plan for him the same way he had a plan for Menu, the way he still had a plan for Garnacho. Um, yeah, maybe he may, he may implement them. For all we know, Hamas could be, you know, a, 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 another like say a left a left sided Gary Neville come through the academy. Yeah, get, you never know. The team. Never know. Because yeah, because Gary Neville when he came on the scene, uh, he dislodged Paul Parker um, mm-hmm. and. No, obviously there was nobody dislodging Dennis Erwin uh, on the left side. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But that's the that's why I give it a seven out of ten, just because I wanted another center defensive midfielder in the left back. Yeah. So I mean, I don't want to say the same number as you. So I guess I'll give it like a seven and a half. But I, I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm right about the same same window. Like you know, if we if we brought in either a, a solid left back or a solid, you know, center defensive holding midfielder, I would probably throw it at an eight or a nine. But no, I mean, yeah, overall, over, overall, I'm very happy with the transfer window. I am definitely enjoying this new strategy of Ineos. And I, I mean, you look even with, uh, you know, Delit and Mazaru. I think I just said it right. <laughs> Mazrawi, Ma- <laughs> no, Mazrawi, Mazrawi, getting a language lesson in the middle of a podcast. Um, but uh, <laughs> Mazrawi, Mazrawi. Yeah, yeah, if you get a, um, it, uh, if you look at what they basically spent on these two players, it was essentially what they are looking at spending on. I guess like Braithwaite and you know some other players. Yeah. So they basically got two players instead of one. So uh, you know. I, I, kudos and and and, and uh, you know everything you read about 
um, you know, these guys that, you know, you hear words like dynamic, attacking fullback, who can play either side. So, you know, I, I'm excited, man. I'm, I can't wait to see him in the, in the lineup, man. No, nah, no, same here. And no, you're right with the whole, the, the Brant White situation that, you know, they wanted 70 million for him. And the two players that Ted Hags brought on, they got him to both of them for less than what they were getting touted to pay for Brant White. But also these two players also know Ten Hag's system. I haven't played, oh, um, yeah, played yeah. with them at Ajax, so um, I think we they might said as that's well the... call Ajax the feeder club of Man United. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possible. well, I did. I'm not gonna lie. I did, I did like the I did like the little tweet that came out um, after oh, yeah. uh, after United saying uh, Dilit and uh, Maswawi yeah. is uh, the comment yeah. said um, Manchester's red, yeah, uh, because the fact that they've got like Martinez, Anthony, even though I, no one cares about Anthony, yeah, uh, Onana, uh, Dilit. Maswi, Maswawi, and then uh, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's five. Uh, yeah, okay. I think it's five. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it is five. Yeah. Yeah. So far, anyway. So yeah. Um, but yeah. So they. Well, if you want to, you you can look at Christian Eriksen and Dan. Oh, uh, Donny yeah. Donny Van Der Beek is also both mm-hmm. played at Ajax, but uh, mm-hmm. I think that was why they sort of had them both earmarked as players to come in because. No, they know the system that Ten Hag likes to play. I don't think Ten Hag's systems really evolved too much that Delate's going to forget what he learned there. And then as why we was the same way. He said that he learned more than enough of his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, early, uh, he learned so much at the early part of his career under Ten Hag at Ajax before mm-hmm. he made the move off to Bayern Munich. So a lot of people have, <clears throat> as you know, the United has always you know, hated, adored, but never ignored. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> they, uh, They've got, I think, Tim Sherwood came out and said something uh, about mm-hmm. Dilit. And then, of course, good old Graham Sunes. He can't help himself. Uh, Grim, yeah, Grim he's Siren. just... He's just... Yeah, Jesus, he, he's annoying. I, I, I've got a few other words for him, but, you know, we'll yeah. try and keep this... F- Since we have children, I hear, listening, well, I guess we'll try and keep it family-friendly. Yeah. Well, you need a camp one here because yeah. you know, last year, we literally didn't have... We were... They completely thin on the back line. They, they, we were playing oh. a, a Casemiro at the center thin. back. No, yeah. Now they go out. Now they go out and get a couple of center backs to come on. Granted, Euro got mm-hmm. injured, but they they went and got no. They're never going to have that situation again of not having at least two natural natural center backs. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, people are coming out saying like, "No, Tim Sherwood came out and said they don't know why he signed Delit because he's no better than Harry Maguire. He doesn't offer anything Harry Maguire can offer." Blah 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 blah. But at the same time, he's twenty five. Okay. McGuire's yeah. 30. Yeah, exactly. I mean, DeLitt is, you know, in the prime of his career, and he's got, you know, probably another five, six plus years to, you know, basically be, you know, to be in the pinnacle of his career. So, I, yeah. I, exactly. Sour grapes. So, ma- t- sour yeah. grapes. Uh, it, it, here's the thing, too, though. Like all these so called analysts and me, no English media. They know all they have to do is mention Manchester United in any positive or negative. Oh, and they're of course they're gonna it's click gonna it's get, clickbait. Exactly, they're gonna they're gonna get some some sort of attraction from somebody. Exactly, exactly. Um, I know one. <laughs> uh, I know one thing. I know you mentioned. I definitely want to get at. Uh, um, uh, you seem to believe uh, we could have the new best Dutch center back in the Premier League, huh? <laughs> oh, that geez, might make man. some that uh-huh. might make some neighbors uh, up the road a little unhappy with you, D. Nah, I don't know about that. I already said that <laughs> he has the potential to be it, but uh, uh, the Scousers will absolutely be going ballistic in their in their council houses right now hearing this. But uh, <laughs> I think it, it could be like you no know, Virgil Van Dijk is. Did he, did he revolutionize Liverpool 100%? But <clears throat> no, taking a shower in Liverpool revolutionizes Liverpool. So we'll see. <clears throat> I'm more I'm more interested to see exactly how Ten Hag is going to implement them and keep everybody happy because you've got Martinez, mm-hmm. McGuire, DeLitt, Lindelof, DeLitt. Yo is in there as mm-hmm. well. Johnny yep. Evans. They're six yeah. center backs. Yeah. So well, I mean, uh, you know, well, you know, there's a, you know, we'll have a lot, of, I guess, games. I mean, we'll have, you know, FA Cup matches, you know, League Cup matches. Maybe some of the other younger guys and other guys can play in those. Um, so I mean, I mean, it's it's good to have those deaths, and there, you know, there should be enough games for 
I would think for everyone to get, ha- you know, to be happy or whatever. And especially, I mean, we'll get into this later. I mean, you know, the schedule or whatever, just in the Premier League in some of these months, especially December, I mean, my God, they're going to need that death. Oh, 100%. And that's the one thing that I'm actually glad I'm seeing is they're actually, this for the first time in a while, that you know, you have the depth. And it's not just the depth and saying that, no, they signed Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans seemed like a bit of a, a panic buy because they had no one else on the market. Now they're actually going out and getting, you know, it. And I, I've seen you no know, Paul Scholes did a, another interview where he said that he doesn't understand why everyone's praising the fact they're signing Dilit and, and Maswawi, Maswawi, but uh, because both of them don't even start for Bayern Munich, he goes, "Why are we taking players?" Like he goes, Dilit had the opportunity to come to United when he when he was leaving Ajax. He didn't. He went to Juventus. Couldn't mm-hmm. couldn't hack it at Juventus. Left and went to Bayern, and it wasn't good enough for Bayern. So now he's coming to United. He goes, "I don't understand why we're taking you no know, this." second and third and fourth best players from teams and expecting them to be no you know, stars quality when, yeah, yeah, when yeah. they might not be and i get mm-hmm. it i understand what he's saying from there but the one thing that ten Hag can say for a fact is that the players he's bringing in will know the system they know they know the way he wants to play where exactly. it's not going to it's not going to take him a year or two like i'm hoping to god it's not going to be another anthony debacle where oh they god bring, that they bring would, him in and, yeah they bring him in, and all of a sudden he can, they they bullshit the bed. But, um, but at the same time, Delit started in the Champions League semi final against Real Madrid and scored technically, a, in my personal opinion, a legitimately good goal against them uh, against Real Madrid. Yeah. But if he, obviously he was good enough to play in the semi final of the Champions League. Yeah, I mean exactly, and like you said, I mean you know the key thing is you know I don't want to call him a. I guess, you know, like a system player or, you know, something like that. But, I mean, in theory, like, you you know, you just said that he should know Eric Ten Hag's tactics and he should, in theory, just be able to plug and play. You know, maybe yeah. there'll be a little bit of, um, you know, like a week or so or whatever to kind of remember some things. But I don't think there'll be a – I don't think he's just going to forget it, you know. Yeah, like, and so here, case in point here is, that, and that this would be my rebuttal back to schools is that when Chelsea or sorry, when Liverpool signed uh, Salah, mm-hmm. uh, Salah left Chelsea and went to Roma, and then he went from Roma to, to Liverpool, and everyone was turning around saying, "Oh, he's already he's a he's a Chelsea reject. He couldn't hack it in the Premiership with Chelsea. Like he's not that good. Like don't know what Liverpool's thinking." And now look at him. So yeah, and. No, the lick came out and even said that <clears throat> the Ten Hag can get the best out of him. So maybe yeah. the reason why he didn't do well in Juventus and didn't do well in Bayern Munich was because he wasn't playing under Ten Hag. It was maybe the system yeah. that both systems yeah. in each club was just didn't suit him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, and you know, it you know, by all accounts he was was pretty damn good while he was at Ajax with Ten Hag. So, I mean, history history says that, you know, it should work out. You know, we'll see. Um, plus, you know, we have other options, too. I mean, I know uh, Yoro is injur- injured, and, you know, he probably he's going to miss some time or whatever. But, I mean, we have other options. Um, I, uh, you know, not that I'm saying I expect him to work out, but I mean, there's players that we can rotate in there or whatever. So maybe that could relieve some of that pressure on being like, uh, of being the main guy, I guess, or, you know, yeah, it's kind no, of, yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Like there's, it takes the pressure off them to be a, a, like an immediate success story. No, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, it allows them time to integrate themselves, not only into the club, but into the team and also into the into the culture that is in Manchester. A lot of these, you know, they're, they're continental players are all coming from Europe uh, mm-hmm. and obviously Morocco as well. So yep. you've got a lot of players, a lot of personalities coming in now. So you have to, I think it's it, it, it's definitely a better strategy than trying to just get somebody, pay big money for them and just hope that, oh, they're going to fill that gap. Mm-hmm. They, we paid we they, we paid eighty five million frankly. He's he's the solution. When in reality, it was not. Yeah, he's, he still he, isn't the solution. He's my personal opinion. He's probably he's if if I looked at the the depth chart right now for starting wingers for United, mm-hmm. it would be like Garnacho and Ahmad are up there with yep. with Ra- Rashford. Really, need, I think yeah. this is a make or break season for Rashford. Just like I think it's a make or break season for Shaw. 
Um, mm-hmm. I, I think if Rashford ends up having the same kind of season they had last year, I think United need to go ahead and cut their losses. He's making. A, he's, I agree. He's, he's he's one of the top earners, and uh, he needs to honestly earn his keep. But um, I would put Anthony probably fifth now at this point behind yeah. behind, Zer- behind Xerxes, and I would have it'd be like you no know, the likes of Ahmad, Garnacho, Rashford, Xerxes, and then Anthony. Yeah, I, I he was he's definitely at the very end of my pecking yeah. with, pecking order. Uh, I mean, there's you know, like you said, four or five other people I would much rather see starting over Anthony. Um, yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, uh, you know, I ju- he's I haven't seen it and it since he's been here he, he you know he's had the glimpses or whatever but there's been zero consistency and then he has those days where you just scratch your head and like what the hell are you doing man yeah. what are you doing do, exactly. do you even know how to play this game yeah yeah exactly and even in the preseason he went he came on uh what match was i can't remember the match now he came on was it the liverpool match it was a match, wasn't it? Um, he came on the preseason yeah. he came on the preseason and uh, he was he, he was only on for 20, 25 minutes and he was pulled off. And everyone thought maybe it's another injury, but it wasn't an injury. I think that Ten Hag just wasn't happy with his no performance. Well, his with it, yeah, yeah. And honest, and I, 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 you know, I would, I want to see more of that. You know, I, you know, if you're playing like crap, take them off. I, uh, you know. No, exactly. Especially so, him of especially him of all people. He hasn't earned that. I know he has the big price tag, but y- you know, if you're just out there and you're a detriment to the team, I don't want I don't want you out there. No, nah, oh, Jesus. No, nah, he's No, I don't even know what he, I don't even I don't even know what superlative to give him at this point. Like no, outside <laughs> outside of the fact he scored again, he scored the you no know, equalizer against Liverpool um in yeah. the FA Cup. That's mm-hmm. about it. I don't know any other. If they, if they yeah. literally make a highlight of 2023, 24 season for Anthony, it would be that goal. That'd be it. <laughs> yeah, it's like literally, it's like, it's a, it's a pretty small highlight reel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but no, nah, with this, this, it's definitely, it's been one of the more eventful. We, we, you know, we talked to our good old buddy Sam uh, Lockhurst about this, and we said it was going to be an interesting summer. We weren't wrong. Um, it was actually a more productive summer than I anticipated. I, I expect, I'm glad. <clears throat> Glad to see there wasn't the usual drawn out, dragged out saga of a transfer. Uh, yeah, I agree. Normally, by this type of this time of the year, like you said, you know, we're still waiting on that marquee signing or the person we're looking for, and you're just like, eh, well, what what's yeah. going on here? Like now, like I even if we don't bring in, you know, Garte or another, you know, or a left back. I, I'm still happy and comfortable where we are at with the club. Yeah, sure. Do I still think we need some things, but I'm happy with the progress we made this summer. Yeah, no, oh, exactly. And I, I'm glad you did, aren't doing the Chelsea mindset of like just thinking, just buy every single player that's imaginable. Um, yeah. But no, they, they obviously they knew they're bringing in uh, Maswawi and they had to get rid of Armand Basaka. Uh, mm-hmm. Armand Basaka was a great, like I, I don't really fault him in terms of his defensive ability. He's, he was he was probably one of the best one on one defenders I've seen. But mm-hmm. in terms of the way Ten Hag again, this goes almost down towards uh, you know the De Gea road where they got rid of De Gea because he needed a goalkeeper who could play the ball at his feet. They needed a right back that that, that, you know, that can go forward. Dallow is the answer for me. But again, yeah. you can't you can't rely on just one defender there. So obviously that's why yeah. they brought on no, Maswawi from from Bayern. And yep. I think will Armand Basaka be a success at, at West Ham? I think he will be. Um, I think he probably he probably suits the way they play better uh, play than than United. They're not ex- they're not West Ham aren't exactly as expansive uh, in terms of like the way they play football as United. They, they, they're very um, well under Moyes. They were definitely very. I don't want even when you say like. <laughs> Yeah. Not 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 kick and run, but yeah. they weren't yeah, no, yeah. they were they, they didn't exactly they weren't playing tiki taka no. football. They weren't they weren't yeah, pulling yeah. it from the back. They were yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah. a lot of their goals they were, were going through Bowen and then um yeah. and so forth. So I wish them none but the best. Getting fifteen million for him after spending fifty. You no, know, is there a thirty five million depreciation over seven yeah. years? You no know, five million but, a year. Uh, you, you know, I mean you know it sucks but you know he you know he wasn't he wasn't a fit and you know it, it was time to just rip the band-aid off and mo- yeah. you know part ways yeah and like the, that's the thing i'm looking forward to now is the fact that uh some of these players that have sort of you no know, like 
I think Scott Mc, Scott. I think if United sign Ugarte, McTominay's gone. If Ugarte mm-hmm. doesn't come on, McTominay stays. He's, that's yeah. yeah that's that, because he's the, he would be the natural uh replay like no for the, the natural solber replacement for yeah for, for casemiro uh, yeah casemiro i i agree with yeah if we if we bring in another you know center defensive midfielder yeah mctominay's out but if we don't i yeah i think he's staying which i, I you know i'm okay with that i mean i i i like mctominay i think he's a decent player i mean sure what i like someone else absolutely but i mean i you know if we were if we're if this is if this is it at least until the you know the winter transfer window or whatever i'm okay yeah no exactly and that's that's my mindset as well is that um no i, I did see there were a couple of teams in for him like offering like 30 30 million for mm-hmm. McTominay, which i was thinking do not like you would you would you would take 30 million uh for yeah him, but i would say that's time, a decent haul for him yeah but at the same time, um, he has proven a very loyal servant to the club. He's come through the academy. He was he was top mm-hmm. goal scorer for a while there last year. Yeah, uh, come up with a couple of big goals. Brentford, for example, was one of the the, the match that he single handedly turned it on his head. You know, we're down one 0 until he came on. Yep, scored two late goals. Um, but is he is he the answer for United? Is he going to be the type of player that's going to take United forward to challenge the like of City, Arsenal, the Real Madrids, and the Champions League? I don't think so. Probably not. not. No, no, no. Not, I, yeah. not when you compare their team and their current squad to, to United. It's like United over time is going to hopefully, if they keep going this trajectory that they went this summer, um, hopefully they can get back up to the you no know, competing. But I'm not expecting an overnight success either. So, no, no, I, I, I'm not expecting an overnight success. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think. Um, you know, I think a top four finish is definitely realistic yep. and some sort of silverware, um, you know, yeah. whether it's I FA Cup or, you know, so, so I definitely think you have to have some sort of silverware and a top four finish for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind, you know, to have an actual, a legitimate go at the Europa League this time. Like, yeah, a really, a really good, like Ten Hag seemed like he was doing it when they knocked Barca out two, two mm-hmm. seasons ago. Um, I thought that was. I thought there yeah, we go. He knocked Barca out. Barca were favorites to win it. No, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Obviously, Sevilla had other other plans, but I would love for United to really make a good run of run of this year. Um, because it was something would... that they can build on. Oh, sorry, on I didn't use. mean to cut. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you saying? No, I was just saying it's something that they can then utilize as a you no know, a foundation of you know getting in certain players and really because right now let's be honest, United don't have Champions League football, so. For some of these players that are coming on, are they getting paid? Like, for, I'm, I'm reading reports. I'm saying this, but I'm also almost you no know, contradict myself because I'm reading reports that the late uh, took. He didn't take. Like, he didn't get more money, but he's not taking a pay cut. He's like sort of almost yeah, getting yeah. the same the same sort of wage he was at Bayern. So it's not like he came over to United. Yeah, demanded uh, he, grand. yeah, yeah. Like he obviously wanted to be here. I mean, obviously he's getting paid very well, but I mean. You know, the fact that he let his coming to a team that has no Champions League this coming season, obviously, that says a lot. Obviously, he wants to play here and, play, you yeah. know, play for Ten Hag. Well, it's it's also the, 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 the from what I've heard, too, the, the wage structure he had is it's more like they they did it, they did it again. And we talked about this before with like Xerxes, for example. I think Xerxes was only like 58 or 60 grand a year, or a week, sorry, not a year, mm-hmm. uh, uh, a week. Uh, I think Delitz got like, a, a low a low base but he has like a uh, high you no know, high fluctuating um performance yeah, bonuses like, like yeah you know, yeah but... certain 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 amount of, certain amount of appearances per per mm-hmm. year and all which i still i still think that that's the kind of um that's the kind of structure I that think, certain players yeah. like the likes of luke shaw should have in Malaysia. yeah no i agree with i believe i think some players should definitely have more of those clauses, like especially like you just rightly say, like Luke Shaw is like he's never, never healthy, and I, I mean, <laughs> you know, he's basically been collecting a paycheck for however long, and I mean, so I forgot sometimes I forget he even still plays for us. Well, I just I just didn't like the fact that the little interview and we talked about this uh, in our podcast before the Euros uh, that he came out and pretty much 
pretty much blamed United for why he was injured. They like, came out and said yeah. that they forced him to come back early, and they, he didn't exactly talk about United in, in a glowing manner. And all of a mm-hmm. sudden, it's like, so who's the fault now? Who's the fault now for him being injured? Because he wasn't at United this summer. He was, he was, he was with nope. England. So nope. and then what? He shows up, and again, just looking at Luke Shaw, he doesn't have. He's he's not built like the, the stereotypical no professional footballer like you yeah he, he just seems very stocky he seems mm-hmm. almost like the, the almost like the he almost has like the build like way the way wayne rooney used to be like you could you can just tell that rooney mm-hmm. rooney's one of those people you can look at him now that as soon as he stops playing stops watching what he's eating stops being energetic and or active should i say yeah yeah that, yeah no he'll he'll let no he's gonna pilot. he's gonna put on the pounds exactly and i think luke shaw's in that same category where I don't think his body is. I think he's. Just, I, I think he's an athlete. Yes, but I don't think. Sometimes, like I remember years and years and years ago, uh, when I first had my first knee surgery, it was good old uh, Doctor Scott told me it was like the guy that my uh, orthopedic surgeon did my surgery. He said, "Listen, we're not putting humans are not putting this earth to play sports to run after a ball and jump and death. we're made, we're hunter gatherers. You're supposed to. That's yeah. it." You know, if you are going to do something, like, you know, you're going to hurt yourself it's probably because you're hunting and hunting something. You're not supposed to be jumping after a ball or rolling around yeah. or doing that. So, and that sort of like falls into the, the, the mindset of what my, my mindset towards Luke Shaw is that I don't think his body is built to be able to be a world class top level athlete because it just yeah. it breaks down on him. Mm hmm. No, yeah, I mean, bro- like he, when, he, when he's, fu- you know, fully healthy, yeah, sure. Do, is he probably. You know, probably one of the best left backs in in England. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make that statement. But he's never injured, or he's never, he's always injured. You know. Yeah. No, no. There's a reason why, like, geez, some of us United fans were joking, calling him Shabarto Carlos. No, because of it, because <laughs> he was like, when he has, when he, when he does play, and he's fit, and he's injury free, he is definitely one of the top left backs. You no, know, I would put him in the top five, maybe even top mm-hmm. ten in the world. But the problem is that's 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 what limits him and sort of doesn't allow him to get into that category of being the best because of the fact that mm-hmm. he is injured so frequently, mm-hmm. and you when you know when you've got the likes of like we Andy Robinson at uh at, at Liverpool that you no know, he picked up an injury this past year but before he was like yeah. geez, he played consistently yeah. and that, again that's that's what wins you trophies that's what gets you championships that's what makes you successful is the yeah. consistency across yeah, not just one player but across every player on the pitch yeah exactly being you know consistency and durability um you know i, I you know a lot sometimes I, i'd rather have those over you know being the most technically gifted player you know if you're a really good player, but and you're always available and dependable and consistent. I think I can work with that more than than the other. Oh, hundred percent. And that's I think that's why, you no, know, in terms of left back, uh, my personal opinion, and Ferguson said the same thing. Alex Ferguson did that. The one player that was always an automatic uh, starter and has and his all time eleven was Dennis Erwin. Dennis oh, Erwin yeah. was like. Uh, he was the best right footed left back that's ever played, and but it wasn't because he was no he had he was technically good and he you no know, he was great at set pieces he would do overlap runs he do all that kind of stuff and the one thing that that set him apart was that he was always 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 like healthy I don't I yep. growing up I don't remember seeing him now obviously as he got older uh no the, near the late the oh. late nineties early two thousands like t- father time waits for nobody. And that, of course, naturally, naturally, had the likes of like Phil Neville coming in and so forth. But mm-hmm. he still, you no, know, he's the man was unbelievable, and he was so well, con- also, to your point, just consistent. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also wonder how many, you know, even in the, you know, the, you know, the early stages of his career, how often did he play through, you know, little knacks or whatever? Because yep. you're always, you're never going to be a hundred percent healthy or pain free, and. Um, you know, I guess, you know, for guys like Luke Shaw, I mean, uh, he, so far, I mean, he hasn't proven to be able to do that. Cause you, I mean, you go through a course of a professional in any professional sport, you're just, you're always going to be injured or, or have some sort of pain or tired or whatever. And I guess, you know, it's kind of 
how you manage that and if and if you're able to tolerate that yeah i'm never you know i'm not saying that you know someone a player should play through you know if they're seriously injured but i you know the point is 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 that you know there's little things that you just are going to have to tolerate and that tolerate some sort of discomfort no and i agree with you 100 percent. and actually it's funny you said because wayne rooney actually came out and said that uh he did it. He was he was doing a a United match, and he actually talked about that. Said he, he came out and said, "Listen, he goes, these players these days. He goes, there were so many times when I played for United and played for Everton, and I wasn't one hundred percent fit, but I wanted to go out and play because I mm-hmm. loved the sport. I loved what I did, and I actually <clears throat> I had, had self respect. Not no, for me, for my family, all kind of stuff. But he also because yeah. then he started talking about. It, he goes, "Where's Tony Marshall? Where's Anthony? Where's Tony? He goes, he goes yeah. I know Tony. He goes, I play with him at United. He goes, he's a really nice guy. But he goes, where is he?" Like why is to me he goes too many of these players are picking up little no they don't want to have to do the no they don't want to have to go out and give one hundred and ten percent they'd rather go out and get seventy percent and then what they do is they hide yep. behind these medical doctors that come out and say oh well he has a you know, uh, no no eighth degree blah blah, blah, strain, blah, blah. Or, yeah, yeah yeah or like or or his toenail no chipped there as he came walking out. like and they're just they're they're using any little like injury as, a, as an excuse to not have to go out and play and. And I can tell you right now, there's some of these players in the past that they, they, I can, you're 100 percent right what you said that a lot of these older players, they weren't 100 percent fit, but they just knew what was expected of them, not only on a professional level but also on a personal level, and yeah. they they went ahead and they went ahead and you no, know, they did their job and they did it well. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um. All right. Well, shifting, uh, shifting gears a little bit. Uh, I know both of us definitely want to touch on this. So, um, for a, li- a little bit, it's uh, Fabrizio Romano is reporting that United and Bruno are closing in on terms for a new contract. It's looking like it's going to be about four and a half years, or he's been at the club for four and a half years, and this supposed new contract is supposedly going to take him into at least 2027 with an option for 2028 and put him at basically the highest salary or in the top salary category at United. Um, you know, I say to that, basically, it's about freaking time. Uh, I mean, this man has earned his pay, earned his dues. He's the captain of the team. He should be the highest, you know, he should be the highest paid player on the team. I mean, you know, the man, I mean, even just watching in the, in the charity shield, I mean, he's just, you know, always, always moving, always, it just, it, it amazes me. And then, you know, in the way he passes the ball, it's, it's just incredible, man. Oh, definitely. I agree with you on that. And then, but again, he's like, it was like you mentioned, we're transitioning to talk about this, but it also sort of it coincides with the point we were just talking about. Like he, Bruno played a few matches last season with a broken hand. Yeah. Um, yep. And no, he's another player. Like I think he literally, he missed his first match. Uh, I don't know if it was for his United career or maybe it was his career in, in general. His first match last season through injury and the only must, and it was, it wasn't really an injury. It was illness. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was it, like he wasn't even injured. So there's a perfect example of a man. I can guarantee you right now, if you walked up to Bruno and asked him, "Are you always 100 percent fit?" He's gonna say, "No, nah, I'm not." Ah, oh, of course but not. Again, but you can tell in the way, like I think he just has a passion for the game. I think he obviously like loves playing for United. Well, uh, yeah, he's a passionate about the game, and he, I mean, and he even said it in his players' tribune. Like he, he loves Man United. Like that was yeah. his boyhood club. So like you know. When he kisses the badge, and t- I mean, he—you can tell he means it. Yeah, exactly. And you know, he's given his best, his best years of his career. Like usually, a lot of mm-hmm. players, especially in his position, the number ten rule, the center attacking midfield, center midfield rule, their prime years are always from like twenty six, twenty seven to like thirty, maybe thirty one. Depend mm-hmm. always depend just depend on I uh, know how well like Roy Keane played under uh, United. Like his prime was you know, around that age, like thirty one, thirty two. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually, the, you know, your legs start to go. the The game seems to speed up, and you seem to slow down as you get older. Um, the man deserves to be rewarded. He, you know, he, he goes out there, and he, he. I would love to see the stats of the ground he covers. I would love to see his, as you no, know, his uh, rest and heart rate compared to his like match day heart rate. Don't oh, just don't compare. God! I just, I could only imagine. It's got to be crazy yeah. low. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see all that kind of stuff, just to sort of because you can just prove you can see it. Every every match, um, 
But we talked, it's ironic, they must have been listening to the podcast, because we actually talked about this not too long ago, that we think that not only does he deserve a new contract, but he also needs to be paid, the highest paid, the captain for every team. Mm-hmm. It should be a written rule that, that the yep. captain sets sets the price to them like that. If you And the only way to get past them is you have to pass them in terms of performances. Yeah. You know, I wonder if, uh, I'd be curious to know if there's like a, you know, a clause or something um, that, you know, players could add to the clause, uh, you know, if you come in and you get, you know, asked to be the captain that you get elevated to that. I'd be curious. I mean, I'm sure it's been done or could be done. I'd just be well, curious. I think what they, I think what some clubs did in the past, and I can't remember exactly which clubs did it, but I remember hearing about it, that they, they always made the captain the highest paid player. So it was almost a respect thing for the club mm-hmm. in terms of like how they treat their captain, because then say, for example, Bruno's the, the captain right now. And, Let's say all of a sudden this time next year, like I'm, I'm seeing rumors again about United going after good old Frankie De Jong. But let's just say, just I, I know, just for hypothetical speaking here, that Frankie De Jong becomes available, uh, mm-hmm. and but he wants to be he wants to be Beyonce earning a lot of money. And yeah, I've seen I've heard in the past that the clauses put in cap, captain's contracts are that they have to be the, the highest paid at all times. So therefore, if they sign a new player and that new player has offered more money than they like say Bruno gets paid. Say Bruno ends up signing a new deal for three hundred and fifty thousand a week. Yeah. And then Frankie Frankie De Jong comes in and goes, I want three seventy five. Then what yeah. happens is United then have to go off for Bruno saying, Okay, it's part of your contract. As yep. captain, you're always highest paid. We're gonna we, you then now you're getting a bumper deal for three eighty five. Yeah. Right, yeah. That, that mm-hmm. way he's always the highest paid because you, Yeah, it, yeah. Because your captain is technically if you look if you look at the whole Technicality of a captain. He's supposed to be like the the uh, no a the the reach like the the manager's right hand man. Like he's supposed to be like yeah. the manager on the pitch. He's supposed to also keep the players. You no, know, is the enforcer exactly? He's, he's supposed to keep them in line. He's supposed to like, also not only keep the players in line, but he's also supposed to be like a very good role model for the club. He's the mm-hmm. kind of people that they you know whenever you, you get introduced, you introduce as the captain of Manchester United. So you always want that player to be. Put up in a steam that every other player aspires to be, and with this big contract coming up, if it's if Fabrizio saying it, you know it's you know it's it's fact. Yeah, it's I mean, I yeah, I mean, if he tweets something, I yeah. mean, very rarely does he tweet something or say something on his podcast, and it doesn't I, happen. I'm telling you right now, in two in two thousand years from now, there's going to be people looking back. There's going to be it's going to be called the, the Fabrizio Bible, and like everything he tweeted is going to be like looked at as like the like I a know. football or religion because like everything yeah. he said is true like everything ciao, he said ciao everybody bruno fernandez <laughs> yeah. yeah so like he just like, hey, like here we go like everything <laughs> yeah here we so, go <laughs> yeah so but no uh. man so if, if, if he's saying it, it's happening and no man at united like usually over the last what since ferguson left so we're going on now to the 12th year uh, 12th season yeah. since ferguson left no man, in my opinion, has deserved it more of a new contract than Bruno. Like, we see too yeah. many players getting, like, I remember, like, Phil Jones got a new contract a few years mm-hmm. ago, didn't deserve it. Rashford yeah. did a good season, but now he doesn't deserve it. Martial got a new contract. Yeah, no, no, I know. No, they were just no handing out money to players like it was yeah. Monopoly money. And they weren't they weren't performing, whereas Bruno's come yeah. on, he's performed, he's proven it. Um and I'm glad to see he's reaping the rewards of getting a couple of trophies under his belt as well. The FA Cup, mm-hmm. the League Cup, and the Europa League, and yep. so forth. And not your side, not yep. Europa League, but uh, yeah, the FA Cup, uh, hopefully the Europa League this year. Yep, absolutely. I agree. I think it would be awesome, or definitely. I, I mean, I hope so. I mean, if not, I'd be off, or we're probably looking for a new manager by then. But I'd like to see him uh, lift the Premiership uh, trophy too during his tenure here. Oh, definitely, and that. But that's see that that's the kind of thing that it's good to hear that United instead of you no, know, there's some of the players are leaving, like likes of you no know, Marshall and De Gea has left, and some of the some of the mainstay players have been around for a while. But it's good to know that the they're still trying to keep a core group together in the terms of like uh no like yeah. Bruno was going to be there, and then there's uh, there's a couple other players. I think Luke, I think Shaw's contracts up. This upcoming I, summer, uh, yes, I believe his contract does expire this year. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's an option for it or not. I can't really remember or not. But I mean, excuse me, uh, I'm I'm n- not picking up the option if there is one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think that's that's the thing. Like just with the, the the season 
about to start in what seventy-two hours, and the man yeah. is ready. He's ready. He's ready. Missing Malaysia. I still don't even know where Malaysia is. So, yeah, honestly, I I don't even know if I have heard anything concrete that says he's where he or what he's doing and what's going on. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me though that if uh, the, the, no, and this is just no, this sort of goes into like our conversation about a preview of the if you will the season but like for mm-hmm. this week this for this this friday it wouldn't surprise me if i, I see you no know, dallo starting left back and <laughs> sorry excuse me uh masrawi starting right back uh yeah yeah i i, I could see that um yeah. yeah i could i could see that yeah and probably you know i i guess i would th- i would say uh mcguire and probably martinez in the middle yeah. um and then I would say uh, I'm I would say Casemiro. Um, I'd le- definitely want to see Mano, um, Garnacho. I'd say yeah, Garnacho out on the right. Um, and then I, I don't know. I I, I hopefully we get uh, we can see Xerxy a little uh, if he's available. Yeah, I think I think maybe Ten Hag's just trying to ease him into the team as well. He's another yeah. player that I maybe think he's just he can come in. Yeah, maybe he can come in as a substitute or something. Yeah, yeah, I think he's trying to get him. Uh, I think maybe Ten Hag's learning a little bit of his uh, errors, those ways of like trying to really mm-hmm. integrate players too quick to the point they end up picking up injuries. So yeah, um, yeah, no, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, yeah, you know, definitely don't want to rush, uh, rush him in or whatever. Um, all right, so yeah, now that we're you know previewing the season and kind of what we think the squad will look like, um, you know, looking at the some of the key fi- key fixtures for this year. I mean, obviously, you know, we've discussed this uh, a little bit in the past, but God Almighty, does December suck? See, look at the uh-huh. games on that. Holy mackerel, man! This is where that death is going to come into play. Yeah, nah, it's it's pretty bad. Like when 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 you look at when you look at December, you've got it's just rough, and then and add in Europe on top of that as well. It's well, just, yeah, that's the thing is like you haven't even added any of the games from the Europe FA Cup, League Cup game. So yeah. I, yeah, you know, well, third usually the third round of the FA Cup is always the first week in January, so it always yeah. sort of coincides with mm-hmm. uh, with the, with the winter season with the, the, the mm-hmm. Christmas period. But yeah, it's been, yeah, no, it's rough. It's it, the, the, all the fixtures are like it's they're all going to come thick and fast. I think United, it's not as bad. Like City, City, Chelsea is probably the one the fixture of the weekend. But uh, mm-hmm. got United, we, no United open up on Friday, but then they play. Well, I think the third match of the season they play Liverpool. Yeah, we got Liverpool on the first. Um, so yep. I would say, I mean, obviously that would be like the first marquee match of the season yep. um I, and i th- i mean well first i mean it's a rival game so it's always going to be important you always yep. always want to beat them but i you know i think that would be a very big in it very big and important match for the team to win and for ten hag to set that message and send the message to the rest of the league that says hey mate we're here and we're not screwing around this year yeah, no, and I think Ten Hag. I think he. I think if anyone knows it, I think it's him. I think especially after the summer he's had in terms of like, you no, know, mm-hmm. is he staying? Is he going? All that kind of stuff. So we'll just. We'll, I, I I the one. There's a couple of players I would like. I want to see with all mass play. Um, yeah. I like I like little Collier. He played. I thought he played well in the Liverpool match. I know all the people disagree, but I I yeah, thought he played. Um, defensive, somebody... defensively, he's a bit scatterbrained, but he. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, Somebody he, was saying well. that um can't remember who tweeted it or whatever, but somebody was saying there's some people in the academy and in the, in the team that think he is a potential candidate to, you know, grow into that number six role. Um, so I don't know. It's, it could be so, could be something to think about, or it could be yeah, interesting, something to I, keep an eye on. Exactly. Like I, I'm, I could, I'm, there's me saying I could be sounding like a spoiled little kid saying, "Oh, I just want to know." Center mid, go out and spend fifty million on Garte. But no, I, if you would have, if you would have said to me two years ago after United won the League Cup that mm-hmm. Kobe Kobe Manu was going to be you no know, one of the the flagship players, one of the players that's the first oh. name on the team sheet, I would have said no way. No, so, I, I, I would have thought, okay, he's a nice player, but I would not. I would he would not be. Yeah, written name written in my starting eleven. Not exactly. not now or not exactly. then. Exactly. So, so for all we know, Ten Hag might have 
little a mass no sort of check marked as a, a potential mm-hmm. starting left back going forward collier mm-hmm. could be another player he's trying to integrate this season and that's maybe that's mm-hmm. why they're not really pushing for you got and spend all that money on him because they're thinking like, yeah why, if we, we bring might him have in, we might have uh, the person here he just needs a little bit of time to exactly. mature into the role uh, and we don't want to we don't want to spend over over the top for a player that might come in and detriment be a d- detrimental to the development of a of an academy player who we have earmarked mm-hmm. as a potential starter in the, mm-hmm. in the near future. So yep. I well it's it, it's definitely it's it's actually nice to be able to sit and have a conversation now of going into season without the doom and gloom without the, all these crazy transfers mm-hmm. and like overpaying for players and you mm-hmm. know. Unfortunately, I also though being a United fan now, the last like no since Ferguson's been gone, we always we always build ourselves up to <clears throat> expect success and hope. You no, know, but I think our mindset now, the more more realistic fans, is uh, we hope for the best, but we also prepare for the worst. So well, yeah, I mean uh, it's you know especially you know in the last ten plus years, I mean it's been a lot more disappointment than success. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's been, it's been tough, but yeah, you know, um, you know, I feel like, feel like we're on the right trending in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, you, you know, it, it's probably one of the times where I've been the most optimistic about the team or felt the most, I guess, confident that we're heading in the right direction going into the start of a new season. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and we'll say there was a, there was a lot of dark clouds that were over the club going into the, going into the summer, uh, mm-hmm. you know, between 10 hags future, uh, Jaden Sancho, which you didn't even talk yeah. about him today. And they you know he's been yeah. sort of been integrated back in the team. Uh, the, uh, Mason Greenwood debacle mm-hmm. is, is go- has been, it was, it was yeah, dealt it's with. behind. Fortunately it's behind us. Yeah. Yeah. No, so there was a couple. Of, so it's it's actually nice United got through that summer um, and didn't create more headlines for the wrong yes. reasons, and they're actually making mm-hmm. they're making the headlines for the right reasons. So we'll we'll see what happens with this season. I'm I'm the same as you. I'm more optimistic this uh, this year. Uh, the one thing I definitely want to see from Ten Hag is better game time substitutions and tactic yeah. tactic changes. Like I, I he did it against uh he did it at the at the, the charity shield there and I get it. Mm-hmm. I understand I, he, I think there was players that were just coming back from fitness. So yeah like Martinez were was low leggy. Uh obviously Johnny Evans was leggy, Maguire and they had to he had to sort of pull the emergency break if you will and put in Pelestry and stick Pelestry mm-hmm. right back. But yeah yeah I, I, but one thing that I remember uh, years I, ago no, I was just gonna say I do wonder, like, if we had an actual natural defender there who was covering, uh, Bar- you know, Bernardo, does that? Yeah. Uh, does he cover that? I don't. I don't know. I mean, yeah. uh, Jay, well, he, uh, who knows? Who knows? Palestry just didn't look comfortable being right back. He's a right winger. <laughs> He's never really played mm-hmm. right back. But one of the things I would love to be able to like understand and, and dev- like hopefully it gets developed throughout the years that uh, you hear. I've, I've, I've watched a lot of coaches have been to a lot of different like seminars and conferences and stuff over the years when I used to coach. And one of the things they, they, that they talked about was going through these like uh, sort of like worst case scenario situations, meaning that if this was to happen, like, cause that's, that's a lot, sometimes where a lot, where you get your coaching badges, like some of these, like, you no, know, the higher the level, that's what some of the, some of the mm-hmm. stuff they ask you saying, Hey, all right, worst case scenario, you have a, a, a defender was sent off or you have an injury and you're out of substitutions or mm-hmm. you know, they, they give you those kind of things. And I'm hoping that like, cause it seemed to me that Ten Hag was sort of very reactive and just sort of threw Pellistry on right back. Did he, I, no, I, I, w- I could be wrong, but we'll find out the, the season. If we do not see Pellistry play right back for the rest of the season, then we know for a fact that was just a random plan that he decided to just throw Pellistry on right back and say, hey, yeah. go on in there. And naturally end up, it cost United no, uh, no, a, a well, I, I hope, work. yeah, I hope, I hope that's the answer because I mean, if he's, just, if that's the plan, you know, week in and week or, you know, not week in and week out, but in a pinch or just, you know, rotate squad. I, I, yeah, I got to question that, uh, for well, that, sure. That, yeah, that's the one thing I definitely want to see. That's one thing he lacked uh, last season was some of the substitutions he made was very head scratchers. Like, and you mm-hmm. can just and it, it changed the whole dynamic of the team. So, this year 
He's got a, a better squad. Um, there's a lot more depth there. So there mm-hmm. shouldn't be any excuses of playing players completely out of position. Last year, his hands were tied. He had to play Kessmer center back. Um, at the Charity Shield, similar situation where his hands were somewhat tied. Um, we had, he took off, uh, he took off Harry Maguire. Uh, yeah, Harry and- Maguire, and he took off, um, uh, the other back, uh, well, he, he well, slotted I, Martinez. He put yeah. Yeah, Martinez left back, and then he put back. Martinez left center back, and he had Johnny yeah. Evans right center back, and then he had Dallo move, move oh. from <laughs> right back to left back, back. and put Pellistry right back. So, um, I personally, I, I would have rather have seen, you no, know, him put like in Johnny, uh, uh, not Johnny Evans. Sorry, McTominay's done it for Scotland. I think he should have just threw McTominay center back and uh, and kept Martinez yeah. left 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 back, but. Anyway, it's 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 water under the bridge now. It's all in the past, but that's one thing I definitely want to see a more precise, uh, effective, and um, positive with with when, substitutions when it, when it, yeah. and tactics. Yeah, because like, there's too many times it's happened where you no, know, too many times United imploded. Like like Chelsea, for example, is the best example. Like there was mm-hmm. that stat that was run around saying that you no, know, um, Garnacho. It, Ten Hag took off Garnacho like on so many yeah, matches and, and, they, yep. up, and, and they never won the match. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff I want to see improvement on. Um, no, he, no. Again, as long as United can stay injury free, he's got a little bit of depth there now. Uh, like we mentioned there, he's got six. He's technically like six wingers to, to choose from now. He's got yeah. Xerxes, He can play up front. He's got yep. Xerxes, Rashford, Rashford Sancho, uh, no. Sancho, Ahmad, no. and and, and Garnacho, um, and and, uh, um, and and Anthony too. Yeah, well, I don't even count him. Well, I mean, I I'm just saying, technically yeah. D. Yeah, technically yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but, yeah. maybe he's a I, half. Who knows? Yeah. So, uh, he, well, why, hey, why, up. why, why, why are you slight my man Anthony? He's got a gold medal, D. Come on. I knew you were gonna say <laughs> that. I knew. It. I knew you were gonna say that. I knew. It. I I was just about to say he's gonna say it. Uh, <laughs> That's that's the that, that, that it's sad that that's the only thing that man's got going from right now. I know, I know. Hey, so. you know, is is what a, hey, it's more it's more of a gold medal than I got, I guess, right? Uh, well, as I said, we'll see. Um, but I, I I still think that this weekend, uh, this Friday, I would like I, I I could be wrong. He could Ten Hag could start the exact same team he did against Man City. Because it was, yeah, they played, you know that, well. yeah, you know that wouldn't surprise me. I get, you know, the, they did play well, and you know, um, you know, I don't usually put much, I guess, like, uh, you know, thought or credence into the in-game commentary, but I kept hearing over and over on the ESPN broadcast that you know this is basically more or less the same game plan that they use in the FA Cup, and they are like. Is this something that other teams can model to try and tackle the beast, basically? You know? Possibly. Um, but at the same time, no, the FA Cup, it seemed a little bit more counter-attacking well, football. Like, this this time, yeah. United, United played some really good football. They, they opened City up. Again, it's not City. Like, I think City, I think one of the, thing, one of the players at City well, really, yeah, really they'd missed obviously, was Rodri. Yeah, Rodri, yeah. And they Rodri holds they, that team they, together. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have their you know their best uh, you know lineup out there for sure. But I think you no, know, you've got Mason Mount got through the preseason unscathed, no injuries. Mm-hmm. I think he'll probably start. He could play that. He could do that interchange in false nine with with Bruno and, and yeah. Mount. This, this yeah, weekend. well, you know that's kind of another team you know that we spent a lot of money on. I want to see want to see more out of him. You know, hope <laughs> you know yeah, unfor- uh, you know. Unfortunately for him, though, he came in. He played his best positions, number ten, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, United have a, a captain in Bruno. Well, the same yeah, position as him. yeah, exactly. That's so. That's not happening. Yeah, yeah. So it's what Ten Hag has to do is what, but similar to what Ferguson did when he signed Tevez and had Rooney, he had to mm-hmm. find a way for both of them to no, no for lack of a better term, co- cohabitat. Yeah, the same, coexist the same, together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like loving the same, loving the same arena and playing the same, playing the same pitch, but. Be effective and be productive. So, but we'll absolutely. See. I, I just right now I'm just happy to not see any more uh, uh, news articles that say so and so is injured. This player is injured. This player is injured. So, yep. Uh, I'm with you, man. Um, all right. Well, uh, you know, real quick for before we sign off tonight, um, what's your what's your predictions for the season? 
Um, what do you? Where are you expecting us to? Where are you expecting us to finish? And how would you define a productive or successful season? Um, another successful season for me would be. I, I want to see now is going to end up. I think it's between Chelsea and uh, not Chelsea. Definitely not Chelsea. I think it's between Arsenal <laughs> and uh, Arsenal and City this year. Yeah. Um, I would love for United to get up there. I'm hoping you. I'll say United probably third, top four, probably third. Um, mm-hmm. I would love another. I, I would love to be able to either defend the FA Cup or even you no. Know, as I said, if, if you're not going to defend the FA Cup and win the League Cup, at least get a run in the Europa League. Um, it, it, another trophy, top four, another trophy is a sort of minimum, just based on the fact that how much pressure Ten Hag's under. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I'm hoping this. I'm hoping this Friday. Like the last two seasons under under Ten Hag has not started well. Um, well, that's the thing is like I want to start off the season positive. right. You know, yeah. You know, I don't want them. You know, I'm not saying that we have to wallop them, but you know, I want a I want a statement to be made yeah. to say that hey, this is what we're doing. This is the direction we're going in, and I want yeah, I do. I want. I want people to notice it and say, "Oh, hey, well, hey, is the old man United back?" Exactly. Yeah, and I, no, I, I, I just like I, I agree with you. I wanted to see a, a cohesive team that understands what their what their what their managers tell them to do, and I actually mm-hmm. just want to see a you no know, a philosophy, a tactical, technical philosophy that the players are playing. You know, like everyone knows that the way City's going to play. Everyone knows the way Liverpool's going to play. Everyone knows the way Arsenal's mm-hmm. going to play. I want United this season to really put that stamp of authority down on saying everyone knows how United's going to play. It's up to how these. It's up to the other teams to prevent them from playing that way, not yeah. vice versa. So yeah, that's what I want to see this season. Yeah, absolutely. I you know I want that fear back because I can't think of how many times you know there was teams that were coming to Old Trafford that yeah. were you know basically looked like they you know, had zero fear that they were, you know, basically playing in our house. And, um, so, you know, I, I want, I want to see that. I want to see that statement be made and I'm with you on, I'm with you on that. Definitely. I want to see a top four finish some piece of silverware. I'd be really happy, you know, Europa, I would say, you know, if they could even, uh, you know, I would, I would say success, you know, probably, you know, a, a, a semi-final run, I might be okay with that. Or, you know, even if we made it to the finals and we lost or whatever. But but I do. we do need some piece of silverware and a top four finish. Yeah, yeah. Something that we can actually substantiate the amount of money that's been spent this summer. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, you know, hour and 15 in, I think this is a good place to wrap up. Um, you know, we are the Biggie and Smalls pod. You know, you can follow us on social, uh, Biggie and Smalls. Leave us a comment. Drop us some review. D, what's uh, what's your social real quick before we sign off? Yeah, well, on Instagram, just dc.mcguigan. dc.mcguigan. I'm keythip86. And, guys, uh, you know, now that the season starts, we will definitely be having uh, an episode out every week. And uh, hopefully get some get some different guests on th- uh, this season that we can bring you some different insights from going around the club. Uh, you know, appreciate you guys tuning in and like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Yeah.